higher. Golden State Warriors and the Dallas Mavericks. The Warriors trying to catch the Don, the Denver Nuggets. The Don's what they call him already. On top of the Western Conference standings, there's oh, a reason for that. they call him spicy. But don't forget about <laughs> Steph Curry. He was cooking. Well, no, see that's the come on, coach. Someone is telling him to leave him wide open like that. Well, he was five feet behind the three-point line. That's well, watch, that's open. watch the sauce here. Uh, oh, Luka Doncic. Once again, he shows you Ooh. something you're like, wait, what? Okay, the Don with the Don sauce. You yes. don't like him. <laughs> hmm. And then we're used to this now. Oh, the it's step still back? his rookie oh, yeah. season, but yeah. we've seen this over and over again. Mavericks take a seven-point lead. Back to Steph Curry. He had 16 points in the first quarter. Second quarter, still yeah. going to work. DJ, I'm sorry. You're not used to being out there in the deep water. I'm sorry. You're literally smiling at him. <laughs> so we move to the second half, and the Warriors are now ahead by seven. Luka Doncic. Oh, whoa. I'm impressed. I know he can stop and pop and step back, but now he can go to the rim. Moving without the ball. That's I the love key it. to that. I love it. Oh, DJ, I'm sorry. <laughs> you came to the deep water again and had to make a drizzle. <laughs> Oh, Into the third oh, quarter. Don't do that. Don't. Iso step back on Kevin Durant. Seven footer, coach. Remember that later on. Remember that play right there. Durant yes. guarding Doncic. Mm. How about Devin, Devin Harris? Harris. He's still, what, 36? In February, he Love will it. be. Love it. Love it all. And Steph Curry rocking the baby to Ooh. sleep. Good night. 11 three pointers for Steph Curry. It's the 12th time in his career he's had 10 or more three pointers in the game. 48 points on the night, but he misses there. So one last shot for Dallas down by three. Remember Harrison Barnes, said? the Remember former warrior. Said? Who's that same guy? Oh. That's what I Red. wanted to remind you about, what Doncic did against him and what happens right here. Yep, moving his feet. Harrison Barnes, not sure he wouldn't do with the basketball, but that guy right there is something nice. Now, in case you missed this game or would like to watch the entire game, Monday at 4 o'clock, it's our game of the day. Catch it from start to finish. Golden State Warriors, Dallas Mavericks. What an incredible one that was. Will we expect the Boogie Cousins back soon? Soon, Coach. Within the next He's week? Coming. He's coming. He's coming? He's coming. He looks good. Uh, had a players only game the other night. And it's Steve Kerr, once again, thank you for allowing me in to watch and see with my own eyes. No cameras yet, but to see him play one-on-one -on -one full court, to see how he's interacting with those guys, and people are wondering, is it going to be 25 and 15 cuz? That's the last thing they're worried about. They're worried about a healthy, happy cuz to come in and help them get back to the promised land. Zara, help me understand basketball IQ when it pertains to Luka Doncic. What we saw in this particular game, it seems like everything was on that next level of basketball IQ. It's because uh, he's a rookie by our standards here in the NBA, but this young man has been playing professional basketball for a number of years. So it's like you're getting a four-year college senior coming out. It's like Brunson coming out of Villanova after three, four years in there where he's got all these games under his belt, all this experience, except Doncic was doing it in Europe against men, pros, getting paid for it. And now he's coming here as a rookie. Certainly the Golden State Warriors had to bring out their best shot is in Steph go. Curry with 11 three-pointers to get that victory. And speaking of your best shot, Joel and B going to bring it once, twice, three times, whatever it takes to get the win in the Garden. And while the Magic use a fourth quarter powered by their big man, Dropped the bearded one in the Sunshine State. And the Greek freaking company took care of business against the Hawks. You're watching Game Time. Bradley Beal played 55 minutes to get those 43 points. Go along with the 10 rebounds and the 15 assists. Well, Washington is shooting 43% from the three-point line. Good night from the uh, deep area. Yes, indeed. It's going to be a marquee matchup right there. Here is Serge Ibaka after the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this is NBA, man. You know, I know. And uh, when you relax like we did in the second half, you know, team's going to come back, you know, because, you know, we start, we start so early getting easy bucket and uh, we kind of relax, you know, but they didn't give up, you know. You have to give them a lot of credit because... Uh, Sometimes, you know, when, you know, teams down like that, they always give up. But, you know, they was keeping fighting, fighting, and then that's why we had a close game. Yeah, you know, Kawhi is a tough guy, you know, and uh, he, he, he had, he was in great, great position under the basket and the ball, you know, to grab the rebound. Also, because I was spacing, you know, to let him play one-on-one. -on -one. 
That's why I had, I had that open twist. I think tonight he played like a superstar. You know, that's that's how we need him to play. You know, he did his job. That's that's his job as a superstar. You know, where we need him to step up and uh, make big play like he did tonight. Wasn't one of the complaints with Washington that they didn't share the basketball, they didn't move the basketball, and suddenly, 36 assists in a game tonight for the Wizards. That's a special number. Yeah, they've been averaging over 30 assists in the game since uh, John Wall has been out. But, I mean, Bradley Beal, a big part of that. This is the second time in the last month we've seen him get 15 assists. I mean, there's one thing for him to have a 40-point triple-double, triple-overtime game against the Phoenix Suns. It's another thing for him to do it, 3D, against a team like the Raptors with the Wizards down in the fourth quarter. Are the Wizards restoring your faith that they could actually be a playoff team this year? When you see a game like this, I know there's no moral victories, but to see how they fought against the team with the most wins in the NBA. If you're a Wizards fan, Chris, to your question, you saw some fight tonight you hadn't seen in a while. And also to Coach's point with the 36 assists, it kind of feeds off with last year's, you know, Monica Wears coach. When every time John Wall wasn't playing, they said more, we all eat more. Well, 36 assists proves that we all eat. So the question is now, Chris, can you bring this fight you showed us tonight all the way up to the All-Star break to, to your question, kind of believe that maybe we can fight for a spot? And that's the thing for me, Coach, that don't let this be a one-game stance where you get down by 25 points, your local crowd starts booing you first, and then you get back in the ball game, you find some energy, and then you make a game of it in double overtime. Hasn't it seemed like Washington's had a horrendous season up to this point? Mm -hmm. But when you look at the standings, they're two games out of the eighth spot for the playoffs, which either means the East is really bad okay, or they've kind of been deceiving, just hanging around long enough to maybe make a move in the second half of the season. Well, I think to this conversation, Coach, you can say one through five, those teams we kind of believe, you know, they're going to be solid. Maybe before Dragic went down for the Heat, you probably would give them a, a little more, you know, solid playoff push. But six down to ten, it's been fluctuating all season long to your point. So now John Wall goes down, and then they start playing better basketball. But wait a minute, he's your franchise player. So now, you know from being up in D.C., a lot of the conversation is, well, wait a minute, John Wall's done for the season. This team is playing better. Now, do we make a move for the, for the trade deadline and maybe shore up our front line and make our rebound a little bit better and maybe hold on to that A spot? Well, who's, who's the move? Uh, that's what I'm saying. Who would the move be? Uh, I don't know. Because somebody's got an awful big contract there. I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, really big contract. I mean, really big. Yeah, really big. <laughs> I, I believe you're talking about John Wall. Who well, no. Well, uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, let's focus on the team with the most wins in the NBA right now. The Toronto Raptors, seeing how they were able to. Again, we talk about the Wizards fighting. The Raptors could have easily been like, okay, this is a game where they have the energy. They take the win. Raptors continue to lead the league. In wins, their only loss since the start of the new year against the San Antonio Spurs. We know that was an emotional game for them with Kawhi Leonard yes. going back down there. When you look at this Toronto team, do you see them as being the favorites coming out of the East to go to the NBA Finals? Not just winning the regular season, but going to the Finals. Uh, well, Toronto, along with Milwaukee right now, are the two best teams in the yep. Eastern Conference. And uh, let's face it, everybody was expecting Boston to come out and have a sensational beginning of the season, beginning of, the, you know, the uh, regular season. But unfortunately, this is not the same Boston team that finished up at the end of last year. You have two guys that came back that weren't there at the end, Kyrie and Haywood. And the chemistry and the same fire was isn't there right now that was there at the end of last season during the playoffs during that great matchup against the Cavaliers. So, you know, questions why Sometimes chemistry is hard to attain. It takes time mm -hmm. for everybody to fit and want the same thing. And with that being said, that's why I would say Toronto yesterday because of that chemistry. Because everyone wondered when you bring in Kawhi Leonard, how are we going to keep this young man happy? Not playing back to back. So I think Nick Nurse, along with Masai Ujiri, is doing all the right things and pulling all the right buttons to keep this chemistry on the right page. So now you look at Siakam, all those Van Fleets of the world, they've all improved over the year. Now that's what makes that bench deeper. CJ Miles still hadn't shot the ball particularly well. We know how he can stretch the defense. So they're a deep enough coach, and they still have Danny Green and Kawhi Leonard, who were what? Championship tested. Yeah, well, what about Indiana? We need to mention them because Indiana, yep. when they finished yep. up last season, Everybody was saying, wow, this team, you know, watch out for them next year. But Oladipo hasn't gotten back yet to that level that he was playing at during the, the playoffs last year. And a certain guy named Paul George was important to that team last year. So even though 
They're good. They're solid. Uh, I mean, this is a tough out to knock these guys out. Still may, may not be the same Indiana team that we saw last year. And you have to also mention the Philadelphia 76ers, who are a team that you see the young talent, you see the possibility for some ascension. They were in action. It's getting tight out west. The top C, the Denver Nuggets look to bounce back against a team with the worst record in the West from last night, the Phoenix Suns. With that, let's welcome in Mike Singer from the Denver Post. Mike, the Nuggets have, for the most part of the season, been exceptional. However, they lost to the Suns last night without Devin Booker. How did the team react to that particular loss? Uh, Nikola Jokic in particular was upset about it. He said that the team took the took the Suns way too lightly. Uh, he said he actually expected them to lose because they were so loose in the locker room. And he said we played their record. Like you said, Suns last place in the Western Conference. Um, that is a, a loss that is unbecoming of a first place team, especially without Devin Booker. But before we bash the Nuggets, let's just you know put it into perspective. It's probably their worst loss of the year. But given that they only have 13 so far this year, um, I think you can live with it halfway through the season when they finally, uh, you know, lay an egg. Mike Fratello here, just wondering, this team went down to the final game of the season last year to have their hearts broken. Minnesota went in, they did not make it to the playoffs. What's the difference right now between this year's team and the one that finished up the season last year? The first thing you have to point to is the defense. Uh, last year, they were among the lower third in the NBA in terms of overall defensive efficiency. This year, they're 10th. Um, the other thing you have to point to is just the organic development of Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray. Both of them are playing at borderline all-star levels. Um, and then even though the Nuggets have dealt with more injuries than any other team in the NBA. A lot of the role players like Torrey Craig, Juancho Hernan Gomez, Monte Morris have stepped up and filled these roles. Um, and, and even Malone said today, uh, no one would have expected that they would be in first place given all the injuries they've had. So uh, it's just been a lot of organic development, guys sort of flourishing uh, in these new roles. I, I like that phrase, organic development. So it leads me right into the big man matchup tonight. They played together, one left, one got some new money, one got a little bit of money. How is that between Nurkic and the Joker now? Come on, all the big fellas going to go at one another tonight. I think they're going to go at each other, but I, I can tell you, I think Nurkic, he, he relishes these matchups. He, he doesn't like how that went down. Obviously, two years ago, the Nuggets made their decision. They decided to make Nikola Jokic the offensive fulcrum of the team, ultimately traded Nurkic. Um, uh, you know, we'll see if there's a little bit of bad blood between them, but I think uh, Jokic is too much of a sweetheart. I don't think he really uh, wants to get into Nurkic like that. But, I mean, it's interesting. Nurkic is rolling. Nicole is rolling. Uh, it's going to be a fascinating matchup down low. I, I was looking at the box score, and I thought I saw a name that has been missing for the majority of the season. Has Will Barton returned? Will Barton has returned. Will Barton returned last night in Phoenix. He'd missed the first 36 games. Uh, he had uh, he, he had surgery to repair hip and core muscles after the second game of the season. And uh, Michael Malone talked about the, the difficulties of reintegrating him back into the lineup after he's missed nearly half the season. And, you know, once the Nuggets finally start to get whole, Paul Millsap returns, Gary Harris returns, only to go out again with a hamstring injury. So now they got Will Barton back, and it's just a juggling match. And, and whether, you know, Michael Malone can navigate sort of figuring out these roles and how to include the reserve players versus getting them back in the starting lineup. Um, I mean, that's going to be the next few weeks, whether they can uh, sort of solve this, uh, this minutes crisis. Well, you're leading right into my next question, where now you have all this goodwill because when guys were injured, it gave the bench a, ch a chance to get better and understand what they need to do. Now everyone's healthy. Are they really understanding how good they really can be if they want to challenge in the West? I've asked some of the guys this, and the reality is is that they are in first place in the West, and yet they are have been at about 60%, 65% of their potential, in my opinion. Right. Um, it, they, are, they need the cohesion. They need Gary Harris back. They need Will Barton back. Um, and then we'll see what they can do. And obviously Isaiah Thomas is still sitting there waiting in the wings, and no one really knows if he's going to be able to contribute or in any sort of timely fashion. So I think that there is a ton of potential, as you alluded to, and it's just a matter of whether they can finally realize that potential and get all these guys healthy again. It's incredible, including drafting a guy like Michael Porter Jr., who was oh arguably one of the most talented players coming into this draft. Of course, he had the injury, so that's why we haven't seen him yet. Michael Singer, appreciate your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.
Good stuff. Well, look, the Warriors half game back of the Nuggets for that top spot out west, and you saw the slip up last night by Denver. 3D, when you have a team like Golden State in the midst of what we can call a dynasty right now on your heels right there, does that add pressure to a team like Denver as you're trying to hold that top spot out west? Believe it or not, Chris, I don't think it's any pressure because they don't know no better yet. And, and that's why he answered that last question so perfectly. When you had Millsap and Will Barton and Gary, had you, you've had pretty much half your starters out all season long, and you're still the top of the West. So all season long, I've been scratching my head, Coach, like, how is Mike Malone keeping this? How is he doing this? Is the Joker really this good? Why is his name not mentioned in the MVP? We mentioned all these other guys, and they're the top of the West. Is the West really that good, Coach? How come we're not giving the Joker more credit? So now you're getting all these guys back. The All-Star break is coming. To your point, yes, the Warriors are getting healthy too, but you're still the top of the West, and you haven't been 100% all season long. I don't want to minimize the importance of Will Barton to this team. No he, question. Will Barton can be a starter. Will Barton is great. Sixth man coming off the bench. This guy puts up numbers. He's versatile. He plays more than one position for them. He hasn't been around. They're just getting him back now. When he rounds back into shape, Millsap rounds back into shape. Watch out for Denver. Yeah. I mean, when you mentioned Will Barton, played the first two games of the season, got injured, came back last night. Like you said, he's a guy that they thought, okay, this is going to be a major part of our team, has not been there. I mean, these guys really – look, you mentioned the Joker as part of the MVP conversation. We actually had that conversation about a month ago. And since then, he scored more in big games because because back then it was, oh, the Joker's not scoring enough when they need him to score. He's shown that he can do that as well, Czar. I mean, if, if that's the case, should he be considered more in that MVP conversation? I think when people take Denver for real, then you may start to hear his name more. Right now, I think people have said, well, we're just waiting for Golden State to get it together. What happened to Houston in the beginning of the season? They're starting to get it together. So let's see now the challenge of these teams that we thought were going to be really good are now starting to hit stride, and they are really good at this point in the season. Can Denver hold on? Because they'll meet each other, they'll face each other during the second half of the season. We'll see if they're ready to take on the challenge. 3D, try not to get too excited. We know Steph Curry's back healthy, and he's one of the greatest shooters of all time. And you discussed who are some of the greatest shooters in the league right now, and who do you want taking the last shot in the game? We bring you that next on Game Time Live.